presenting myself here in Nashville, Indiana. So I thank you for taking the time to come back on again. And uh, I guess the first question we're going to be is, have you seen any changes since the last conversation that we've had about this? Oh, thanks, Raymond. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of change, but not tremendous change yet. There's still a lot of volatility in, in rates, and it's really just driven by the liquidity. The, the investors come in and they cherry pick out the loans with the good credit and the things that they want and take those off of the lender's lines of credit, which frees up some portion of it. So the next morning, the lenders pop out with good rates for the morning and uh, attractive rates for high credit, you know, above 680 or 700. They sell loans till they max out their line of credit and then they basically bump rates up and say we're done for today. And then they wait for the investors to come back in. So it's, you get some good rates in the morning for your pre premier type of uh, borrowers. Uh, otherwise, there's still some some difficult times for the below 700 credit scores. They're, they're, they're improving though slightly. Well, let's talk about one thing that I want to note is this forbearance of the mortgage payments that you hear being thrown around left and right. And I, I think I've got a pretty good handle on it, but I want to hear it from you that forbearance does not equal forgiveness. Yeah, there's there's a lot of chatter about this in the industry online and, and I think there's some confusion. So yeah, to set it straight, at the, at the end, it, let's say you request a forbearance of six months. The government has encouraged lenders to offer six months and then another six month extension after that. Um, so up to one year. Yeah, so up to a year of payments. But let's say you you let's say you take the six months. There's going to be a, a limited number of things that will happen at the end of this six months, and there's a lot of uncertainty to a couple of them. So the choices are going to be that you can repay the six months of payments, and you'll be caught up. Uh, they're not going to be one, in one shot, one lump. So let's say your payment is you know two thousand dollars a month. You could pay 12,000, no late fees or anything, you're caught up. Now you're current. Option number two is gonna be to refinance, take the balance you owe, including those six payments, refinance and start a new term. Which you uh, can help them do that, right? Yeah, yeah, we can help them do that. Now there's some question coming as to whether they'll qualify to refinance because they've just not made six payments. So yeah. some, pro some programs say no 30 day lates in the last year or two. Other programs say, have you made your last 24 payments on time? So one of those might be a yes, one might be a no. So there's some question there. So then it's almost like a double whammy. They're getting this forbearance, which they still owe, but because they took the forbearance, now they can't refinance potentially based on what you were just saying which may not allow them to catch up the money they would. Now, other, other lenders may allow for a repayment of the, of the forbear, foreborn payments. So if, let's say, you skip six payments, 12,000 bucks, they'll let you repay that over 12 months. So for 12 months, now your payment is 3,000 instead of 2,000. Yeah, so you've increased it 150%, which could potentially be problems as well. And if you miss one of those payments, then that's a problem, Jay. Closure. So that's right. So if those things don't happen, your lender may offer to do what's called a modification, where basically you're behind a few payments or four bore six payments or whatever. They will take what you owe and they'll add those to the end of the loan, and you're going to pay interest and Basically, instead of having 30 years now, you got 30 years and six months. Uh, so they you know, shift your, your payment back out. That's right. So the the advice I would have is if you, unless you really cannot make your payment, keep making them. Because otherwise, it, you and I both know if we skip a payment, we throw the money in the checking account. Most people are probably going to do something with that money. I don't know what you can do from your, you know, quarantine. You ain't on vacation area but you know most people find something to do with it so if you can keep making your payments due if you really cannot make your payment talk 
call, call the lender and talk to them and see what kind of options are there and how it's going to be treated at the end because you just don't want to pretend like you're skipping a payment and think nothing's going to go wrong. And then it, it's six months later, you're facing a foreclosure at the end of the year. Now they say they're, they're uh, not going to foreclose for the rest of 2020, but like you say, maybe six months and one day or January 1st of 2021, all these hammers could drop and everybody's going to be banging on whomsoever's door. Hopefully it's our door that, Hey, we need to refinance. And then if we look backwards on their credit report and see these kind of non-payments and issues, we, we know, even in the industry, not everybody knows how that's going to be treated because they're revising uh, the lending guidelines right now and adding overlays and things based on this period of time. Are they going to report these forbearance as a non-payment to a person's credit, or how does that work? I mean, well, if I make a payment because I got a forbearance, can they really? Tell I think that's I think that's getting interpreted right now because their their intention with the legislation was not to punish people for taking advantage of of you know, whatever assistance or uh, relief that they can get. But I don't think that legislators know how to write that in the detail needed to explain. So I think it's going to get interpreted and it may, we may not know the answer to that even, even after six months. So potentially what you're telling me is that each specific lender may choose one of those options and it could be Luckily, the roll of the dice, if your lender says, hey, we'll recast your loan and make it longer, or somebody may, one lender may go, hey, we want it all due. Now that this ban has been lifted, now you got to catch that forbearance up. Well, something many people may not realize when we pull a, a full tri-merge credit report now, there are line items that shows e each account. And what it used to show is if you were 30 days late, 60, 90 days, and there was tick marks there. Now it actually shows a 24 month calendar and the date that you made those payments. So as you can imagine, now that is going to show a void for six months if you forbear six payments. Yeah. Nobody, I don't think there's a clear answer yet, and I don't think the legislation is clear how that's gonna be treated. So I think you're taking a risk right now if you skip your payments. Yeah. So once again, to reiterate what you said, if you are financially able to make that payment, you probably should so that within the next two years, you have the opportunity to refinance or not ding your credit. Because one of the other things, and Colin, you were talking about this, that the 30-year uh, treasury and the note uh, the mortgage are different, so you are expecting a drop in the interest rate when this ban gets lifted. I, I think so. I've been watching 30-year Treasury. I mean, it's a something crazy low, like 1.3%. And that doesn't mean your mortgage is going to be 1.3%, but mortgage lenders add a premium onto that 30-year Treasury somewhere between one and a half and 2%. So let's call it one and three quarters. So you have one and three quarters plus a little over one and a quarter, you get just over 3%. So a 30 so year six should be a 3% or three and an eighth today. That's what it should be if we were in the normal liquidity market, but because of this cherry picking thing you were mentioning, the banks don't have that much liquidity. So they've driven the interest rates up for the, so that they can sell to the investor, right? They're basically, yes, that's exactly what's happening. They're, they're catering these loans to the investors right now. And the market is not, the, the offered rate isn't matching what the market is telling us rates should be right now. So when we get, when we get some semblance of normalcy and maybe a stabilization in unemployment, which my personal feeling is that probably sometime this month, the president is going to say, we need to open back up. And the governors in, you know, some states are going to comply and open up. Some are already doing it. Other states are going to say, you know, we're not ready to do that. And, you know, right. I, I think before the end of this month, we're going to see 
things turn back on and we're going to still see some bad numbers. I mean, 20 million people in unemployment, that's bad. So we've got to, you know, get over the hill and get on the other, get on the, back on the right track. But I think once we do, I think there's going to be, a, there's going to be really good interest rates to take advantage of and, and not paying your payments, not handling things, you're risking being able to take advantage of those. So I think it's going to be a really, really good time for a lump, probably for a couple of years, rates are going to be super low. That's my yeah, that, that, that I was literally going to say that and you, you made the thought. So somebody that actually does make their payments and is able to bless you. But the good thing is, like you said, is when this lifts, those interest rates are going to adjust back to where they should be, which is that three, three and a quarter. And if you've got any kind of loan at four, four and a half, it's going to be a great refinance time frame. Right. So that's the second reason that they should continue to make the house payments. All right. Yep. Colin, any last words before I get off here? Uh, we've held your time. We thank you for joining us. Is there any last words of wisdom that you want? Um, no, uh, Appreciate you guys' time, and like I say, uh, if you got questions, reach out to Raymond or myself, and, and we can connect you with the other if you're interested in pursuing a new career while you're sitting in front of the TV binge watching Netflix. Either one of us can probably uh, put you to work and make you some money. So, all right, uh, and we're going to put Colin's phone number. It'll be right below his name, and mine will be on mine. So, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Colin, I thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you again in a couple days, all right? Thanks, Raymond. Keep up the good work. See you. Bye.